Greetings. I'm Michael Quinn Patton, a professional evaluator who's been doing training with nonprofit leaders, government leaders, business leaders for some 50 years around how to think evaluatively, which includes importantly making distinctions between outputs and outcomes, a common area of confusion. And to teach that difference, I like to tell a story, the story of the little engine that could. If you know the story, you'll recall that it's the story of a train carrying toys and food for the good little boys and girls on the, on the other side of the mountain, and it breaks down. And the toys and food are very distressed about not getting to the boys and girls on the other side of the mountain when a freight train comes by. And the toy clown waves down the freight train, explains their plight, but the conductor says there's no room for boys and girls food and toys because they're loaded with materials for the factories on the other side of the mountain. A passenger train comes by, carrying adults to their jobs on the other side of the mountain, and they likewise have no room for things for toys for boys and girls. And a old retired train that's been over the mountains many times, but is now used to switch cars in the train yard, comes along. And it's too tired to try to make it over the mountain one more time. Just when all hope appears to be lost, a little blue train that's just used for short runs on this side of the mountain comes by, never been to the other side of the mountain, but it's moved by the challenge facing the toys and the food to get to the boys and girls. And so it hooks up the train that's broken and starts up the mountain. Chug, 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 puff, 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 saying, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Puff, 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 chug, chug, chug. It climbs up the mountain, gets to the top, and glides down into the station. And the final frame of the book shows the toy clown and the rag doll embracing. There's fireworks coming out of the milk and the asparagus, and a big smile on the face of the little train that could, saying, I thought I could, I thought I could, I thought I could, I thought I could. After telling the story, I break the leaders into small groups to discuss the messages embedded in the story. And they come back finding it's an inspirational story that teaches the importance of sticking together. If one thing doesn't work, try something else. Keep trying, keep your eye on where you're trying to get to and work with others and you'll eventually get there. And in the hundreds of times I've done this with leaders around the world, no group has ever come back and observed that there's no evidence in the story that any toys and food got to any boys and girls. The story ends with the train getting in the station late. It's not even clear there's anyone there still to unload the train. It shows how challenging even implementing programs can be that we celebrate the implementation. The output in this case would be to actually deliver the food and the toys to the boys and girls. And the outcome is that they would consume the food for a healthy diet and play with the toys that have positive development impact upon their childhood. And so when we're distinguishing inputs, in this case, the toys and the food, from the activity and implementation, getting the food and toys delivered to the kids, which is the output, and then the outcome of actually consuming that food and those toys, we're making distinctions that have evaluation implications at each stage along the way. And so in whatever field you work in, whatever kind of programs you deliver, think about these distinctions between delivering the program versus having the program make a difference in the lives of those with whom you're working, which is the desired outcome. I'm Michael Quinn Patton. This is my reflection on the distinction between outputs and outcomes with thanks to the little engine.